Grace and mercy and peace are yours, friends, from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior Jesus. Amen. Again, I wish you a very Merry Christmas. It's good to be together with you again on this Christmas morning. I know some of you gathered here last night for Christmas Eve worship, and some of you did not. Last night I preached a message entitled, Broken Darkness. A message about how Jesus, the light of the world, has broken into the darkness of this world, into our brokenness, into our broken lives, and his light has revealed to us who we are, and he pulls us back together, he redeems us, he restores us in his grace and in his truth. The very last words I spoke last night were these words. Leave the light on and live in the light. And then I said, Amen. Leave the light on and live in the light. And so I carry on that message today then by speaking to you a message entitled, Living in the Light, based on John chapter 1. You know, when Jesus is born, there's something mysteriously attractive about Jesus. Even though there's no earthly majesty about this boy, he's born in a manger, a bright star in the sky still leads shepherds to him. There's something attractive about this baby. Something about how the light comes into the world and draws people to it. The, the, the magi later on are drawn to that shot. Throughout Jesus' earthly ministry, many people are drawn to the light, especially those living in great darkness. The sick, the hurting, the dying are drawn to this one who can provide healing and hope for them. Even again, Jesus has no earthly beauty about him. Some people are attracted to his presence. As John says in the Gospel lesson, in him, in Jesus, was life, and his life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. There's something attractive to us about living in light as well. Here we are. We don't have the lights off. We have the lights on. Lots of lights, candles, trees, the lights. So we desire to live in light. And maybe even more than just being attractive and being attracted to living in the light, we could even argue that it's necessary for us to live in the light. We live in a climate, in this northern climate, where it's often in the winter months, kind of dark, dreary, overcast, with a mixture of all kinds of precipitation coming our way this evening. Not a, not a beautiful, bright, shiny day at all. But in the recent past, a couple of days ago, we did get a break from our two weeks of snow and had some beautiful days. And I enjoyed some beautiful days outside, soaking up some sun and warmth, playing in the snow with my children. When those sunny days come, it's a reminder to us that the sun does exist and it is always shining. We know where we live that the winter blues are not just a, a figment of, of our imagination, but there are a lot of people who actually struggle with a diagnosis called seasonal affective disorder. People who actually battle depression in the winter months. Some would even argue that, that a cause of that is a vitamin D deficiency. Vitamin D is sometimes called the, the sunlight vitamin, right? The vitamin that comes from a safe exposure to sunlight. And if you don't get enough vitamin D, oftentimes your mood can go down. Research shows that about 10% of the American population has a vitamin D deficiency. People with vitamin D deficiency, according to research, also suffer from longer hospital stays when they're sick more serious health issues. Vitamin D is a beneficial effect of safe exposure to the sun. Sometimes I watch a, a TV show uh, on the History Channel called Alone. 
And by when I say sometimes I watch it, I mean I watch it every week. But um, there's a, it's this uh, show where civilian survivalists are placed alone in the wilderness, uh, and they don't have a film crew with them. They have to film themselves, and they're placed miles apart from anybody else. Uh, the first two seasons were on Vancouver Island, uh, where Marcus Huff, our director of youth and campus ministry, used to live. Um, and uh, But this season, they're down in Patagonia, South America, in, in the pristine mountains, and every contestant is on the shore of a mountain lake where they can catch fish. Now, the, the premise of the show is that they are alone, on their own, completely on their own. They get to bring 10 supplies or 10 things with them, and uh, they stay as long as they want or as long as they can, and the last person standing wins $500,000, but they don't know as people are dropping out. It's, it's an interesting show, at least I think so. But in this last week's episode, there was a guy who was filming himself, and he was in tears. He was in tears as he was filming himself, and his tears were over the fact that he had been in his location, they'd been there for 10 days, and he's realized that he has not seen the sun. He has not had sun on him. However, as he looks across this beautiful lake and mountains all around him, across the lake, on the shoreline, the sun is just shining on the opposite shore. The mountain on the other side of the lake is just being beaten with the sun. But where he is on this side of the lake, he turns around and there is a mountain range behind him and the sun is just being blocked. He's being shadowed by these mountains and it, it hits him. He realizes that for the duration of his time there, he won't be in the presence of the sun and the days are getting cold and he looks across and he has no way to get around the lake or across it. I guess the irony is that for a job back home, he is a boat builder. So uh, maybe he'll build a boat. I don't know. Stay tuned, I guess. They've got me hooked, right? Uh, but he, he doesn't know what to do. And he's, he's in tears. He really realizes that the sun affects him this much. And he desires to be in its presence. And so he actually does something brave. He hikes up the side of this mountain behind him just to see if he can catch a glimpse of the sun. And it peeks out behind a mountain through the trees, and it's on his face. And again, he's filming himself again in tears because he has stepped into the presence of the sunshine, and its warmth is warming his body and his soul and his mood. It's an interesting story because this is a, a show about survival. The man should be out, you know, gathering food or building shelter, and the only desire of his heart at this moment is to be in the presence of the sun. You and I also need light. We need to live in the light. It is necessary for our lives to live in the light of Jesus Christ. The gospel from John that John just read for us reveals to us this truth again about who Jesus is. Now, this is kind of a complicated passage of Scripture grammatically. Um, uh, the Gospel of John, John must have been a really smart guy. His Greek grammar is quite complicated, uh, and so it translates a little choppy into English. But sometimes we have to read things multiple times for it to sink in. Can we just turn to the Gospel of John, open it back up? I want to read it for you again. You heard it once, but let me read it again, and then we'll, we'll make a little sense of it. We'll... In the beginning... In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was nothing made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John, a different John, John the Baptist, and he came as witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. John was not the light. He came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world already, and the world was made through him, yet the world didn't know him. He came to his own, and his own people didn't receive him, but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God, 
who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, again, John bore witness about him and cried out, this is, this is he of whom I said he comes after me, ranks before him because he was before me. And from his fullness, from Jesus' fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. I'm going to stop right there. All right. Again, you can probably read this multiple times. <laughs> I, I've read this a lot of times and, and get new truths out of it. But if you look again and, and see how it is that John explains who Jesus is and who we are, Jesus, John says that Jesus is the Word, the Word of God. And in the very beginning, at the creation, the Word was there. And the Word, Jesus, is light. And where light is, there is life. So who are we then? We are created out of the light and the life of the one who gives us light and life. See, without God, basically, we are nothing. All things come from God. All goodness comes from God. Without him, we don't exist. And so what God brings into our lives is light and life and truth. We need the light of Jesus Christ to keep our lives going. To keep our lives going for all of eternity. We need his light to shine. We need his light to survive. All right, so what then are the benefits of living in the light? I love the way that John describes it in verse 16. Look at verse 16. I love the way verse 16 says this. Living in the light, in the fullness of Jesus Christ, we have all received grace upon grace. Grace upon grace. Grace upon grace. Grace. Grace is described as an undeserved gift. A gift you don't deserve. This is gift giving time, right? Um, last night I heard some parents uh, threatening their children uh, that, that, uh, that they wouldn't get their gifts if they weren't behaved, right? Do you know that uh, the whole Santa Claus thing? Uh, kids, cover your ears. Uh, Santa comes uh, to give gifts to those who deserve it, right? That's how it plays out, right? Santa comes to give gifts to those who deserve it. God comes to give the gift of salvation to those who don't deserve it. Grace. Uh, sometimes we say that grace is an acronym. God's riches at Christ's expense. G-R-A-C-E. God's riches at Christ's expense. God gives the riches of his love and light to us at the expense of Christ giving up everything. He gives up his life so that we can have life and have it to the full. It doesn't make sense, and that is grace. Grace upon grace. Jesus is grace. He's the source of grace. And when we live in the light of Christ, what comes? Grace. So his grace is upon grace upon grace. And this is for you daily, for me daily. This is what we receive every day. Day after day, Jesus pours grace upon grace. Man, do we need it. We gathered here last night to confess our sins, to receive the body and blood of Jesus for our forgiveness. I received the Lord's Supper three times last night, and I needed it every time. Grace upon grace is here for you today and tomorrow. The sun is shining on you. You know, on days like this, literally, on days like this where it's overcast and dreary, we say, man, is the sun shining? Where is it? I don't, I don't feel it. I don't, I don't, it doesn't feel sunny out. <laughs> and in days in our lives, it feels much the same way. You know the days that are dreary and overcast, broken, dim, dark. Is the light still shining on those days? Is the sun still out? It is. <laughs> it's there. It may seem dark and dreary, but the sun is out right now. Friends, the sun, Jesus Christ, shines on your life every day. Every day, grace upon grace upon grace upon grace. I pray that you see this, that you remember it, and that you experience it daily. Again, vitamin D is a benefit of sun exposure. Grace is a benefit of sun exposure. 
So you know, it, was a, that was a play on words, uh, you know, S-U-N, S-O-N, right? Vitamin D is a benefit of sun exposure, and grace is a benefit of sun exposure. That's a good place to end the sermon. Merry Christmas. Amen. <laughs>